Hi, this is Matt from Find My Blogway. I'm going to talk to you about Screaming Frog's SEO Spider software. Um, there's a free version of Screaming Frog SEO Spider and also a paid version. I'm using the paid version at the moment and I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that you can do with Screaming Frog. What the tool essentially does is it works as a spider in the same sense that a search engine bot would um, and it crawls through any given URL or domain and follows through all of the links on, on the pages. You can then get kind of a full report on, for example, internal, external links, H1 tags, meta description, paid title, etc. So great for on-page SEO. And there's also a lot of stuff that we can do when it comes to link building side of things. So I'm just going to start by putting in uh, Find My Blogway uh, into the URL bar. And there's a few things that we want to do first, just before we actually get going. Uh, and I'll go to the Configuration tab, and then Spider. Screaming Frog will pretty much crawl anything that you want it to. So it can go through images, all the CSS, JavaScript, and Flash, and uh, follow all of the nofollow links, etc. I don't want it to do that. I want to just view the actual web pages themselves, what we're going to do. So I don't want to be going through all of the CSS and the JavaScript and all that kind of things. There's also quite a few advanced things, so um, you can kind of have a look at these as well. But I just want to see the external links and uh, check links outside folders. And the second thing I'm going to do is just here, filter down just by HTML. So I'm just going to start this. And in general, Screaming Frog will kind of take a few minutes, depending on, on the size of the site sometimes, to, to actually crawl through everything and depending on what you're actually searching for. You'll see it's just started to uh, crawl through all of the URLs on the site at the moment. This shouldn't take too long um, to, to, to actually crawl through all of these URLs. And you'll start to see already, we've got loads of information here, the URL, the status code says so already a 404 coming up there. The title, the title length, meta description, meta description length, all the way through to the H1. You can export all of this to a CSV so we can have a little look and kind of drill down even deeper when we get into Microsoft Excel, um, which is, is going to be incredibly handy. Also, <clears throat> we can kind of filter stuff within Screaming Frog itself. Personally, I like to, to get it all into a spreadsheet and we can kind of filter through data a bit easier. I suppose it's really personal preference, to be honest, because Screaming Frog itself has loads of great filtering options. Um, so that's, that's actually pulled, uh, pulled off all of the links now that it's, that it's found. Uh, so we've got 108 URLs that it's found in total. Um, and just kind of a side note, if, um, if we didn't want to pick up, for example, the author pages, or we didn't want, say, specific tag pages, or some of these where we've got pagination pages, um, what we can do is, in configuration, we can go here to exclude. And essentially what we could type in would be, if we, let's just say we didn't want the authors, um, we could just type in dot asterisk. Uh, so you type in the start of the URL and then anything after it will ignore by putting a, a full stop and an asterisk next to it. Um, and then you would have to just run through Screaming Frog again uh, and it would just filter through. Um, so a really handy feature, if, if, especially if you're working in CMSs like uh, Joomla or Drupal where you have like forward slash component and you, you're pulling off a lot of the modules and stuff like that. So not, not exactly the stuff that you want to be doing. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to start going through some of the things that we can quickly find with this data. <clears throat> one, of, uh, one of the quick things to be able to find, uh, you can export all this information, but if we just kind of follow up here um, and put status code here, uh, we can find that some of these links have some 404 errors. Uh, now, clearly, um, I've put a linking incorrectly to my uh, LinkedIn page, um, which I can then find out exactly which page is on. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that it's on my about page, but let's just take this link. So the content marketing 
um, category page. When we click this link, down at the bottom here, uh, we can press in links. And what we can do is find out all the pages that are linking to this URL. Um, and then we can find out which pages are showing up 404 errors for these links. So clearly across a lot of these pages I've got a lot of 404 errors coming to this incorrect URL. So that's something that I can instantly address. Um, likewise, here, WordPress theme, so on the, on the right for us page I've got an incorrect URL showing up there. <coughs> um, and just going back here, we can see uh, this external link is supposed to be um, is actually showing up on the about page incorrectly. So I've obviously forgot to put HTTP there. So you can quickly get some valuable information to make some quick tweaks. Um, and especially if you're running something like a blog, uh, these things can get out of hand after a while. So we can find all sorts of things there. Now, <clears throat> again, this can be exported into a CSV and we can do all of this filtering inside there. Um, I wanted to just give you an idea of um, the actual the interface of Screaming Frog first. But what I'll do is if we just save as find my blog way test. Save that there. Open this up. I'll leave that to load a minute. Um, <clears throat> so, another thing that we can do within Screaming Frog itself, which I usually do along with um, with these status code type of things, so that we can have this extra little information, is things like finding out if we've got any thin content on a site. Um, so, what we can do is select by word count. Now, being a blog um, in general, there's, there's usually not a lot of um, pages on the site that, that have a lot of thin content, so I'm quite on top of that. And now obviously these are just some links that are showing up zero, but if we go back to word count, we can find the smallest amount of word count on any of my pages um, that's, that responds correctly. It's actually 595 um, characters, <clears throat> so a good healthy level. But if we were seeing some pages that had a particularly small amount there, then we can start kind of digging a bit deeper and finding out why that is. Um, so I'm just gonna just gonna open up the CSV to find out the information that we have. Just delete this top row here. <clears throat> so having all of this information within the CSV can be pretty great for easily identify stuff. So we have all of the links showing up here. Um, what I'm going to do is just go to data, filter. <clears throat> now I don't want to see any 404s, 307s or 301s just for what we're going to do here. Just going to filter out that information. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try and find out any, any specific pages on the site that have a title tag that's say too long, for example. Um, there might not be any specifically on this on this uh, site because again I have been quite on top of that. But the way I like to do things, just do conditional formatting, uh, highlight the row, show highlight anything that's greater than say, 70 characters, we'll fill that in dark red, see if I have got anything. I've got too long a title tag. No, I don't. Um, again, I do that for meta description. Uh, I've got a few here that I can see already. Uh, greater than 155. <clears throat> Straight away, um, we can see some meta descriptions that are too long. But also, as well, quickly identify any web pages on the site that actually don't have a meta description so that could possibly result in us losing out on some click-throughs from within the SERPs so that's something that we can instantly have some actionable data to, to move forward and actually improve the site there from an SEO perspective likewise do we have multiple H1s on the page um, one thing that I actually noticed just doing this um, today was that actually 
I recently installed a newsletter sign up little widget that I've been putting on things and didn't realize actually within the code of that plugin there's a h1 tag showing kind of fancy one that is tutorial straight to your inbox <clears throat> as a result what's happened is uh, I'm duplicating my h1s across a load of my blog pages so that's something that I can quickly go in and sort out uh, and get that sorted out so you see h1 number one h1 number two um, on top of that and go over, find any pages without a canonical link. Here I've got canonical links set up, uh, which I do through Yoast SEO plugin in WordPress to all of the pages, but I would imagine a lot of the sites you look at will not have canonical links set up. Um, another good thing that you can do if we just go back to Screaming Frog, um, in the configuration you remember we set up so that we don't check images. If we uncheck a load of these and just check the images, we can pull off all of the images that are on the site. And actually, within the images tab here, we can have a look at, but we can pull this off again into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we can have a look at images that are really large in file size, it could be slowing down page speed, uh, so we can instantly kind of compress those, re-upload them, and get that sorted out. Um, you can also take a look at some that aren't actually showing up as alt tags, uh, but obviously we've filtered that out. So you can instantly start seeing the value really in, in this kind of data. Now another thing that I use, again, you can do word count, largest to smallest, smallest to largest, find some sites that, uh, find some of our pages on the site that have any thin content. Level, this shows the level in the link architecture. If we have some pages on our site that are particularly deep in the architecture that we want to actually have near the top of the structure, you can have a look at these site, these pages and see why that is. Okay, that's because it's page six. What about this one, the online marketing category? Uh, why is it that we haven't got that kind of close to the top in the hierarchy? And that could be a potentially important keyword driven page, likewise the PPC page. Um, we've also got the Google Plus category page, so we can have a look and, and see and identify quick flaws in, in the actual architecture of our website. Likewise, we've got the Outlinks tab here, so we can find out what pages have a really high number of outbound links, um, and we can see, okay, is, do we need to have that many outbound links? Um, can we reduce that down a bit? Have a little look at where they're going, and, and that's something that we can look at directly in Screaming Frog as well. So if we actually go through in the interface here to the spreadsheet, this is this is one of the, the main advantages of doing things within Screaming Frog. Uh, so if we've got this URL that has 85 outbound links, we can find out exactly where those, those links are pointing. Um, so we can go through, find out what the anchor text is, also the internal links as well. So we've got this extra data to, to kind of understand the reason behind the statistics as well, um, which is a really powerful information to have. Um, another really great feature is for finding broken links. Now, this can be broken links that are internal broken links, and, and we can find these by, by having the advanced export feature done. And what we can do is do an advanced export of say links that are 404 errors, 301 redirects, or server 500 errors. Um, either of these three you can you can take off those um, as a report, open that up in Excel and it will give you a nice list of any internal links that are showing up with, with these kind of errors. And then you can go in and recorrect those in, uh, links straight away. Another really awesome feature that I use, and I mentioned this in one of the link prospecting tutorials that I did before, is for finding broken links on web pages. So if, for example, Find My Blogway was a, blog, uh, was a link target of yours, um, what, what you can actually do is go through on the external links. This could be on a specific page of the website um, and or a specific section of the site that you think I particularly want to link there. And what you can do is this will list all of the outbound links. 
coming from the page, um, or coming from the URL, I should say. Now, what we can do is, same way as we do the internal links, filter this by status code. So we've got a 404 error showing up here. We can then go down to the in links tab, and we've got, okay, famablogway.com, five of the three best uh, WordPress music themes. Now, this this link here is a 404 error, and I'm assuming that is one of the the actual themes that I've linked out to. Now, if I was someone who was looking for a link to their WordPress music theme, I'd identify this page as a potential link target to do some broken link building to. They could get in touch with me and say, look, actually, I've, I've noticed this link's broken. Here, I've done a write-up on my theme. You can plonk that into your site and then link back to my theme as well if, if if you think that it would be worthy and add to the user experience. A common link building tactic used by um, many webmasters and it's really effective because you're identifying issues on someone's site and then giving them a direct solution. So that's that's a fantastic way to, to kind of work with webmasters and generate good quality organic links really. Now another thing, just, just on a side note, if you do use proxies, you can actually crawl big sites under a proxy, um, so you can just enter in your proxy settings here, and I'm not going to do that for this tutorial, but if you're doing a large amount of scraping, it can be good, just so you don't have your IP blocked, for example. Um, so that's particularly a useful feature, and to be honest, we're only touching on a few of the, the many features of um, Screaming Frog. It's probably worth checking out the, the actual link prospecting stuff that I've done before where um, I've tied in with other tools, so for example tied in the information I've got from Screaming Frog with Scrapebox um, and also if any of you use the SEO tools plugin for Excel which I recently did a video on you can start really drilling down and getting much more information. We could be getting the citation flow trust flow each of these pages, uh, finding some more information with regard to say the Facebook likes, Google Plus count, Twitter tweet count on the pages, and, and doing some kind of much more integrated um, research and analysis onto web pages. But overall, a really powerful tool and and it's something that um, I would definitely recommend purchasing because of the fact that you get extra functionality in the sense that you get to filter more, um, search for more URLs, you get all the advanced configuration settings up here, and um, it's just a one-off fee anyway from Screaming Frog. So yeah, uh, a tool that I would say is, is almost an essential for anyone looking to run a successful website. So I hope this tutorial has been useful, and uh, if you check out the, the, the actual web page on the blog, we're going to be giving away one free license of Screaming Frog SEO Spider. So check out the page there and you can kind of enter to win. Okay, hope you found it useful.